All right, this is my first video in a series on how to work with SAS. So this video is going to be talking about how to get set up, how to get SAS installed, and just doing a very first conversion from SAS to CSS. SAS, if you don't know, is a CSS preprocessor, which means you can write something that looks a lot like CSS, but it's got some programming involved in it. So you can create variables, you can do mix-ins and functions, you can do calculations. Some of these things have been added in CSS3, but not everything. So it's just a very efficient way that you can write your CSS. Okay, now if you have SAS installed previously, um, the older versions of SAS, there was different ways you could install it. You can install it using Ruby, you could install it using Brew. Um, I had it installed previously with Ruby, so I had to uninstall it. And to do that, I did gem uninstall SAS, like this. Following that, I also had some problems where I had to go into my user local bin directory, and there were three files, SAS, SCSS and SAS convert. Those three files I had to manually remove as well before I installed the new version. Now the new version of SAS is written in a different way. So if you come to saslang.com, this is the website for SAS. On the install page, they talk about where you can go to get this. Now you can install it as a node package as part of your project if you want, or I prefer the standalone version. So there's a link to GitHub. This is the GitHub page now. So Dart SAS. SAS written in Dart. And there's a version for Linux, for Mac, for Windows, for 32-bit or 64-bit processors. So I downloaded the 64-bit. I just downloaded this tarball. I expanded it. And then I moved the folder into my Applications folder. So I have, if I move over to cd slash applications and I do an ls I will find dart sass inside of here and where is it oh there it is right there dart sass and this is the folder so if I cd dart sass go into that folder and I list. There's a source folder and then there's the two files, SAS and Dart SAS. This is the application right here. This is the one that you're going to be running. So in order to use this, you need to have it in your path. So for me, it's inside of applications Dart SAS. I have to have that as part of my path. Now, if you're not familiar with editing your path in Windows, you can go into the settings to change your environmental variables. There's an environmental variable called path. I have a video on how to edit that. I'm going to do this on Mac, obviously. So I'm going to edit my bash profile. <clears throat> Pardon me. My bash profile file. This is where I include my path. Every time I start up the terminal, it loads bash profile to figure out what the path is. So I'm going to CD out of here. I'm going to go into users, Griffiths. This is my home user folder. Uh, another way you can do this on Mac is just this. This is my home user folder. There we are. And inside of here, I have a file called bash profile, period bash profile. So I want to edit that. And the program I'm going to use to edit it right here on the command line, I could do it in a text editor as well, but I'm just going to use nano. This is just a little command line editor. And what I added was this line right here. This is what I added. Now you'll see I've got three lines with path in them. Each time what I'm doing is I'm saying grab the variable called path and then append all this other stuff. Append all this other stuff. So I just added one more line. I can do this over and over again. I'm just continuing to add things onto path. So I added my applications Dart SAS onto my path. The colons that you see, these are the separators between the different values. Whenever there's a dollar sign with curly braces, that's a variable. And it's all wrapped inside of double quotation marks. So I will leave this line in the description down below so you can copy and paste it. If this is the place you saved it, great. If you've saved it someplace else, just edit this path. 
Once this change has been made inside of your Bash profile, I'm going to exit. So down here you see at the bottom exit, which is Control X. I hit Control X. If you make a change, so let's say that I come in here and I made some changes like that. When I do Control X, it says, hey, do you want to save it? I say Y for yes. It asks, what's the name of the file? This is the name of the file, obviously. There, I've now saved it. I've made saved the changes that I've made. Okay, now I'm going to jump over into my folder that I've created for this. So I have a very simple um, project folder here. I've got a folder called SAS, a folder called CSS, an HTML file, and this main.scss file. My HTML, there's nothing different here than you would do in a very, very basic page. So I'm going to navigate over to this folder. I'll leave it on here so you can take a look at this syntax and see if you can figure it out. So I'm going to go into documents code alright here's my folder so I'm now inside of this folder on the terminal now SAS what it does is the SAS program will interpret these SCSS files, the SASE CSS files and it converts this into CSS I want to take this file this is a variable with this value. I'm going to take this, put it inside of here. So my resulting CSS will just be this piece with this value written out. And it's going to take this and save it inside of here. So that's what I want to do. Now I have SAS installed. I can double check that I do by doing SAS slash slash or dash dash version. There it is, version 1.10. Great, that's the one that I have installed. Now I want to run the SAS command. So SAS is the command itself. And from this folder, I want to go into the SAS folder to find this file. And I want to convert it into index or main.css inside of this one. So we're going to convert SAS slash main.scss space dot CSS slash main dot CSS boom done come over here and I'm going to uh, refresh the file tree and there it is there is my main dot CSS file so if I open that there we are this is the resulting CSS and the map file that you see here if we open that up this is just kind of a, a history and tells me what the latest version is so I can track the changes being made into here okay so my h1 with the color is the result of this now if I come in and I do something else let's say that I want to target the paragraphs inside of main like this and I can say color and reuse that variable color again I save it now this change has not been automatically put into here but I can come in and run the same command again boom it's now been converted and there it is there's the the updates been made to the CSS now that's great wonderful it's creating the CSS file for me but you can see how it would be a little bit tedious to do this over and over and over again so there is a watch command. I'm just going to expand this to make it a little easier to read. So with this watch flag, what I can do is I can point it at a particular file and SAS will continue to run in the background. And every time I save a change to a file or a folder, it will do the update automatically. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say watch everything inside the SAS folder and automatically create a CSS file to mirror that SAS. There we go. SAS is watching for changes. So I'll come back into my SCSS file, my SAS file. I could target something in the footer. So let's 
target the anchor tag inside the footer and we will say that the color for that is going to be a um, gray like this so we'll come up here create a variable called gray and set it to let's do this just a very light gray so I'll save that and we can see over here that it did compile the change automatically I didn't have to do anything else I just saved this file and if I come over and look at the CSS sure enough it's been added all right, so that's the introduction to SAS. That's how to get it installed. I'll put a few more notes inside the description so you've got the references and the links to that. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.